sister, mother, father, husband, wife, son, daughter, friend, colleague, neighbor. Our relationships contain many people with the potential to hurt us, and very often hurt us in small but ongoing ways as we grow. We try to brush these hurts aside thinking that they won't or shouldn't bother us, but they do. They bother us because our egos are quite fragile. They're like magnets, and resentments are attracted by our egos. And most of us tend to hold on to these resentments for a very long time. For instance, we might resent members of our family who have treated us in unfair or harsh ways. And sometimes we are estranged from our siblings or from our mother or father for one reason or another. We remember those moments uh, of hurt or embarrassment from our classmates growing up in school or from colleagues in the workplace or the bullies at school. Even though these hurts occurred many, many years ago, our hearts become warehouses of wounds and hurts and grudges and disappointments. Jesus taught us the art of forgiveness. Peter, kind of the right-hand disciple of Jesus, uh, the one whom Jesus entrusted uh, the church to be built upon, Peter once came up to Jesus and said, Lord, how many times must I forgive a brother or a sister who sins against me? Seven times? And Jesus says, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. In other words, Jesus was telling Peter that forgiveness has no limits. Jesus said, God forgives us of our sins as terrible as they are. And so now we must share that sense of love and forgiveness toward others who have sinned against us. And we pray that in our Lord and in the Lord's Prayer every week around the table. Now, those who have wounded us or embarrassed us or hurt us or cheated us it doesn't quite seem fair that we have to forgive them. I mean, this teaching goes against conventional wisdom. When we hurt, we hurt back. But Jesus doesn't always come to us with conventional wisdom. It is a wisdom of a higher realm. It is the wisdom of God. And Jesus is telling us, church, forgiveness just doesn't have any limits. Jesus told a parable about a father and his two sons. John just told you that. The younger son asks for a portion of his father's inheritance, and then he goes off into a distant country. He puts as much space between himself and his father and brother as he can. And so in this distant land, the younger son lives as he pleases, he spends everything, even loses his self-worth and finds himself, himself keeping company with pigs, which was a, 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 a huge insult to a Jewish person, and he's quite hungry. And in the meantime, the father waits. He waits. And through all the days and nights of the son's absence, the father waits. Jesus 
said the father waited until that day when his son finally returns back home or turns in the direction of home. And when the son is, is seen in a far off distance walking, the father actually goes out to embrace him, unlike, uh, unlike most Jewish men, the father runs to embrace the son. Filled with compassion, he puts his arms around him, kisses him, and welcomes him home. So what about the other brother? I mean, the older, the older brother seems to lack forgiveness for his younger brother and sees no reason that he needs to be grateful or to welcome his brother home. It seems to lack the grace, the love, the compassion that his father has. <coughs> Hopefully reconciliation will take place between the older brother and the younger brother. And the older brother will someday join in celebration as well. But we know family dynamics are always a challenge. Think about this parable. And it's that. It's a parable. Think about it in light of forgiveness. In light of forgiving others. Most people, when they're asked to identify with a character in the story, will identify with the younger brother, which is kind of interesting. Nobody seems to uh, identify with the older brother who stays home, who's faithful, who works the farm and uh, does the chores and goes to, to Sabbath on, uh, or the synagogue on the Sabbath, the church on Sunday. No. People kind of will raise their hand, oh, we identify with the younger brother. And we ask, why is that? Why do we think that of ourselves? Well, I think that maybe we identify with the themes uh, that's going on in the story with the younger brother. The themes that, that at times we are lost. And that we do seek and search for a direction in life. We, don't, we haven't always found that. And we do seek forgiveness from God. And we want God to welcome us home. And so for those reasons, a lot of times we just are eager to identify with the younger brother. But I think there is, the story is not meant for us to identify with just one. The story is meant for us to identify with every character that's in this story. And so we have some traits of the older brother as well. I mean, at times we might resent the freedom of God to be so forgiving and compassionate and grace-filled. I was sharing with my class uh, at the Explorations class on Thursday about I've carried a grudge all my life against some classmates of mine in high school, and I, if I met them face to face, I would find forgiveness hard. We do find it difficult to forgive others. And we spend our lives trying to be good and to do the right thing. And so maybe our fragile egos get a little offended at such a figure as a grace-filled, compassionate father. A father that is so forgiving that he welcomes this younger son home. And not only that, this father waits. And he waits. And that statement means every single day there is the hope for reconciliation. Don and his wife were heading home after shopping for groceries one day when a truck driver, partially blinded by the late day sun, was fiddling with the radio to find a music station. And at that moment, the truck driver swerved and broadsided the car and it caused the car to burst into flames. This is a true story told in Joyce Brooks' book, Boundless Compassion. 
Don's wife in her early 30s died in the crash, and Don sustained some serious burns. Many, many years later, Don, now in his 70s, was driving past a fruit stand when the memory of that horrible accident just came back to him with all its pain. And the remembrance of that moment reappeared so strongly that Don stopped his car and cried. That, that's when Don decided to go and look for the truck driver. Although it took a while, Don located the truck driver and extended an invitation for him to have coffee at a local shop. And when they, when they met, Don soon realized that this truck driver had carried a lot of guilt and shame for what he had caused to happen. And as Don watched the truck driver's discomfort, he took his hand and he managed to get out these really difficult words, three words. I forgive you. And at that point, the truck driver broke down and he told Don that he had never stepped foot inside a truck after the accident happened. Later, when Don spoke about the encounter, he explained to uh, people why he made the effort to meet the person that had caused him so much grief throughout his life. And he simply said, I just had to let the man off the hook. Forgiving others. I was at Cotner in 56. Just as an accident happened on Friday that took the life of a young man, a passenger in his 20s. <coughs> I heard uh, fire engines and ambulances going swiftly down O and 56 in Cotner, and lines of cars, and I thought at that moment something terrible must have happened. And I read about it in the papers the next day. I actually uh, Googled it on my phone and later in the day saw as Cotner was closed most of the afternoon. And I thought, I don't know who the driver was, but I know that the driver is going to spend a lifetime trying to forgive himself. For that accident. And will the family of that young 20 year old ever be able to forgive? When we forgive church, we lift the weight off of our heart. And we don't only lift the weight off of our heart, but we lift the weight off of another's heart as well. And this allows space in us then for a greater love and an easing of hurt that we might carry with us for an entire lifetime. Jesus' parable of the prodigal son or the loving father tells us that in the end, no matter how we have lived or what we have believed or the mistakes that we have made or the victories we have achieved, in the end is our hope in the persistent, patient, ever-seeking love of God. A God who forgives us and welcomes us home and says, I have prepared for you a place at the table. Let us come and eat. We offer you an invitation to become a part of a community that seeks to extend the grace
grace-filled 